Hello folks, my name is Dr. Spencer Kwasnicki, also known as Dr. Quas. Before we begin, I'd like to say that everything we discuss today is for educational and entertainment purposes only, and I in no way, shape, or form endorse uh, any illegal activity or whatsoever. Having said that, today's topic is going to be growth hormone releasing peptides and growth hormone releasing hormone versus human growth hormone. So let's get right into it. What is growth hormone releasing hormones? Well, they're also known as growth hormone releasing factors. They're produced in the hypothalamus and they precede the release of human growth hormone from the anterior pituitary in your brain. It's essentially an amino acid uh, peptide hormone. Now, growth hormone releasing hormones include um, such hormones as uh, CJC1295 with DAC. DAC stands for Drug Affinity Complex. There's also CJC123 um, and GFR or mod GFR1 through 29, which is also known as Cimarellin. Cimarellin is actually, I believe, legal in the U.S. right now. Now, those are growth hormone releasing hormones. Um, they tend to um, be eaten up in the blood rather quickly and they don't last long. Uh, I believe the longest is lasting uh, 30 minutes and the shortest lasting around five. Um, so you don't get as much of a growth hormone spike with that. Now, what are growth hormone releasing peptides? Growth hormone releasing peptides include such items as GHRP6, GHRP2, ipamorelum, and hexarelin. Um, the main difference between the two is, um, or between the, the, the group, is that uh, GHRP6 really stimulates ghrelin, winter ghrelin, which um, will increase gastric motility as well as hunger. So it's going to give you a real intense appetite. Growth hormone releasing hormone and growth hormone releasing peptides do is they stimulate the anterior pituitary to secrete your own natural endogenous um, human growth hormone, um, which is would be the word endogenous means that it is your own growth hormone. So the main difference between these two items and um, actual human growth hormone is that um, you would have to inject um, exogenous growth hormone um, to have the pulsatile fashion or to have the spike in growth hormone. Now, having said that, what are the other differences between the two? Well, human growth hormone. Um, when taken endogenously, actually, um, or exogenously, actually um, has a longer half-life, uh, up to three to four times longer than that of the GH secretion or the GH spike that you will get from peptides or from releasing hormones. And that can be um, good and bad. The good of it is that um, it is much stronger, but the bad of that is that um, just because you have that longer um, action of growth hormone doesn't necessarily mean that you will get the results you desire if you're taking it for muscle building purposes. Um, because growth hormone is a hormone that has a negative feedback loop, so you want it to come and be secreted in pulsatile fashion, meaning you want to have a secretion of it, then you want to pause and not be secreting, then you want it to be able to have another spike again. And these different spikes throughout the day actually will increase growth more than if you have a continuous secretion of growth hormone, because it will actually, um, like I said, give it a negative feedback. Other differences are actually that, um, for instance, the if you did an injection of growth hormone releasing peptide 2, you'll have a spike of growth hormone from the anterior, anterior pituitary that it'll be 2 to 10 times higher than that of a 7 IU, which is an international unit injection of growth hormone. This leads us to um, the next question, which has to do with dosing. Um, what is the dose now that we know how often to do it? Um, how much should I take? Well, that's a pretty easy question. You can start with, and the general rule is um, one microgram, not milligram, microgram, MCG per kg or 100 micrograms per injection. Having said that, there are studies out there that indicate that you do receive increased results in effectiveness for up to three to 400 micrograms per, 
injection. Now, anything beyond that, and in all honesty, anything really beyond 300 micrograms, there is no added benefit. There is no increase in GH um, secretion from the anterior pituitary with anything more than three to 400. So keep note of that. Now that's pretty interesting news if you're a peptide user or if you're someone that's looking at or researching peptides that um, a small dose of 100 micrograms of each of those growth hormone and um, growth releasing peptide and releasing hormone can equate to a seven international unit injection of growth hormone is pretty important um, for many reasons. Now, growth hormone, like we discussed earlier, uh, will last in the body a lot longer than the spike that you will receive from a peptide um, forced uh, secretion of growth hormone. So to make up for this difference and try to get um, similar results, to make up for this difference and try and get similar results as growth hormone, uh, that means we need to do multiple injections for, per day, which leads me to the next topic, which is um, what is the shot timing or dose timing of growth hormone releasing hormones and growth hormone releasing peptides. So when it comes to dose timing, um, in order to make up for the, down, the shortfall in half-life, we have to do multiple injections per day. Now there's some rules and regulations to it, especially to helping the effectiveness of releasing peptides. Um, and that is because if you have any carbohydrates or fats circulating in your body or in your GI, it will, it, it, those obviously increase the secretion of insulin and insulin negatively inhibits growth hormone. So you don't want insulin going on when you want growth hormone going on. So that means translation. You can't eat for two hours previous to an injection and for 30 minutes after your injection. Now keep in mind, if you do have um, something that is pure protein with no carbs and no fat, by all means you can eat that um, and have that in your system while doing the, um, the injection. But any fats or carbohydrates will actually inhibit and make the, the injection less effective by therefore recrease, decreasing the secretion of growth hormone. Um, so not only do you have those feeding regulations, but you also and it ties together because since you can't eat for two hours previous and uh, you can't eat for 30 minutes after, you also can, can only do an injection every three hours. And the reason for that is, is because that's how GH works best. If you allow it to secrete every three hours in a pulsatile fashion rather than a regular fashion, you will receive more benefit from it. So having said all that, how do most people run peptides or what is the coaching that someone would give for peptides. Well, if you're just looking to um, benefit from the anti-aging properties of growth hormone, um, then you might only want to do uh, one injection uh, per day, and that would usually be right before bedtime. So you would need two hours before bed, and then you would do your injection, and um, you'd go to sleep for the evening. A lot of people reported having um, waking up and having some sleep disturbances when doing it before bed, those people um, usually were using GHRP6, which stimulates gastric motility, which means your gut starts moving. And it also um, basically it secretes, stimulates ghrelin, which is going to make you feel hungry. So a lot of people wake up feeling hungry. So if that's the case, um, you could use um, a GHRP2 or an ip ipomorelin, which won't have um, those side effects. Um, now, if you're looking to receive not only the anti-aging benefits, but you want some muscle building properties as well, um, so you're looking at trying to do a twice a day injection at this point, and the schedule would probably be before bed, like previous stated, and your second injection will be post-workout or PWO. Um, that will help increase protein synthesis post-workout, uh, which will help leading uh, to muscle building. Now, if we wanted to add um, a third injection per day, or if perhaps you wanted to not only add muscle building properties and anti-aging properties, but also um, uh, fat burning properties as well, the third time to do an injection would be as soon as you wake up on that empty stomach from fasting all night, which will allow more f uh, fatty acids to be oxidized and used as energy. And this in turn will help you burn fat. Um, so having said that, 
you can't just get up and do the injection and go about your day. You should get up, do the injection, and go do fasted cardio. And what that'll do is it'll help increase um, the fat burning properties of uh, the, the peptide and growth hormone. Now, that's a you can that's doing three injections per day. You can do an injection every three hours, which would mean in a 24 hour day, you could get up to eight injections. That isn't really, really, that isn't realistic as you'd have to wake up throughout the night to continue your injections. So a normal person would probably do three to four injections per day. And even that would be quite a bit of work because there is a lot of restrictions as to um, when and how and what you can eat. Now, having said that, a typical growth hormone releasing peptide protocol that would equate to roughly seven to eight international units of GH injection per day would be growth hormone releasing peptide 2 at 300 micrograms four times per day plus mod GFR 1 through 29 at 100 micrograms per day. Studies indicate that that injection schedule will equate to the same as a GH injection of seven to eight international units. Okay, hopefully this illustration will help um, help you understand what's going on. So we have um, growth hormone releasing hormone, which is secreted from our hypothalamus, or we can inject it ex 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 exogenously. And we have growth hormone releasing peptides, which is injected exogenously as well. Both of those cause our anterior pituitary, hence the positive, to release GH. GH then goes down to the target tissues and releases IGF. Um, now, what's happening here is if we continue to release GH, it'll come up and actually be a positive influence on somatostatin, which will then tell the anterior pituitary to stop secreting GH. And this is why you don't want a continuous secretion of GH because it actually gives it a negative feedback loop stopping GH. And that's why in a lot of ways peptides can work out to be better because this secretion of GH is temporary and short and a higher secretion of GH. So getting back to the differences, um, if you're doing this or thinking about doing this for the purposes of increasing muscle, um, then peptides might be something more that you want to look at because they do have that pulsatile and increased spike of GH, which is um, better for actually building muscle as opposed to a continuous secretion of GH, which can actually inhibit, inhibit further secretions of GH. For example, a study done with a 100 microgram dose of GHRP2 and mod GFR 1 through 29 will result in a spike two to three times higher than a single IU dose of GH. All right, so we've covered what are growth hormone releasing hormones, what are growth hormone releasing peptides, what are they compared to human growth hormone. Um, we've gone through what typical protocol injection for peptides would equate to a typical human growth hormone injection protocol. Um, and now we've discussed dosing and dose timing and food restrictions. So that leads us to the next item, which is what are the side effects that one might receive from taking peptides? Well, they're a lot similar than to what they'd be with taking growth hormone. Um, and most people do feel some of these symptoms. So most people aren't symptom free. Um, and that's why we say to start off slow and build up and maybe even start your first injection once at night to see how you respond and build from there. Side effects include things like swollen hands, swollen feet, redness in the ejection site, um, possibly even allergic reaction, carpal tunnel syndrome or carpal tunnel type symptoms I should say. Fatigue is a really popular one that a lot of people feel uh, which is another reason why we say take the first injection at night and, and feel it out from there. Another common um, symptom is uh, or side effect is um, uh, numbness and tingling in the hands and the feet. So um, the symptoms aren't that severe, but they are something to watch out for and some be cautious of. Um, the next thing we should discuss is cost. 
Now, this is where peptides really shine. Um, growth hormone tends to be pretty expensive, um, even if you're getting it on the black market, which I do not advise. Um, it can cost upwards to uh, four or five hundred dollars a month, maybe even more. Um, where peptides, you could probably run um, a peptide protocol for roughly maybe a hundred dollars a month, a little bit more, a little bit less, um, depending on where you get your peptides and um, and of course how um, how how pure they are and how good the quality is of the peptide that you're getting. So when it comes to um, effectiveness with cost, peptides really shine compared to growth hormone. Uh, so keep that in mind uh, as you move forward. Now, there's some few interesting things that I want to touch on um, while we were on this topic. Growth uh, GHRP2 or growth hormone releasing peptide 2 um, has in recent research been shown that it does not desensitize at higher doses and there is no sealing dose. Therefore, what that means is that the higher the dose of GHRP2, the higher the spike you can get of GH. And now remember, um, the protocol that we talked discussed earlier, if done at three to 400 micrograms um, four times a day with a GFR, mod GFR 1 through 29 of 100 micrograms per, uh, four times per day will equate to up to seven times higher spike than GH uh, 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 injection alone, which is pretty um, interesting information. So having said that, uh, three times a day dose of 100 micrograms of GHRP2, so this is the lower dose, and mod GFR 1 through 29 done back to back within three hours spacing in between, so done that th four, three, four times a day, will equate to roughly a three uh, IU or three international unit injection of growth hormone. Um, so GH still um, supersedes peptides when taken at higher doses, but if you're looking at just taking a moderate dose of growth hormone, um, peptides might be more something that you're looking for um, just because of the effectiveness and as well as uh, the cost, which is a big deal. I want to thank everybody for watching today and I want to remind everyone that everything we discussed today is once again for entertainment and educational purposes only. I do not, um, I cannot condone doing anything illegal, um, but I do thank you for joining today. Once again, I'm Dr. Spencer Kwasnicki, also known as Dr. Quaz. And I hope to see you again. If you have any questions, please feel free to email or get in touch with us.